how good you are to be Lord. And then with them among us, Lord, in this gathering, Lord God, to minister. And we, Father, have great expectations, God, that you, you will do great things. And we thank you, Father, for this stirring up of praise in our soul, Lord God, that we cannot help but sing. Thank you, Father, for uh, these gifts and offerings. And pray, Father, for the directed uh, use and, and investment in the kingdom. Father, thank you for the privilege you get afforded into these things, Father. And we thank you for blessing in this part. Amen. so much for your giving, responding to the goodness of God, understanding that God blesses those who are in covenant with Him. I appreciate our praise and worship team so much. Thank God for them and ask God to bless them richly. Amen. Somebody started with all of you. concerning our recognition. How would we see Jesus? How would we look upon him? You know, when we start talking about sight, there's different there's different kinds of thought about that. Now, if you say, do you recognize someone or do you see someone, they would they would think of that in a, in a physical way, you know, without even realizing it. And in fact, what we see physically has such a great impact on us that, that all you have to, Certain, you know, you, you don't think except for in pictures. As you as you hear words, you begin to think, and you, you know you, the, how those words are defined to you is going to be dependent upon your life, upon what you've known. You know, I can say the word dog, and everybody's thinking about some dog they know or knew. And I could say, well, what about a big yellow dog? Oh yeah, I've seen those big laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You start thinking about where you've seen one of them. Well, how about if I say a dog with three legs? I can imagine that. <clears throat> kind of strange. See, in other words, we just think in, in pictures, and that's how our thought goes. So that, there's that physical point of recognition, and that's, that's good. You know, uh, it has a lot to do with how we understand things. But then there's another way. When we start talking about spiritual things, we talk, talk about what... The Lord wants to do in our lives. There's a, a certain amount of what we would call the soul. Now, it's a distinguishing between the physical, the body, the soul, which embodies our, our personality, our intellect. Uh, a lot of different things influence who we are as souls. But spirit, the Lord is a spirit. We are created in the image of God, and God is a spirit. So those who follow him must walk in the spirit. Right. So that's the depth of what God wants to do in our lives. As we look at Jesus, it's got to be something spiritual. Now soulishly, we might, you know, you can think back, oh, I got saved at a camp meeting or a revival, and so that communicates to you real well. But see, it's got to go beyond that. Because there are a lot of people who have bad experiences in life, and they kind of define who Jesus is based on those experiences. And, and that's not the right way. It isn't just how you have experienced the Lord emotionally. Because no matter how you and I feel, God does not change. Right. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right. And so, you know, he, you, you might feel different things 
as you as you reflect upon who Jesus is, your your sense of, of who He is in your life. There uh, there are a lot of different ways to go through that. When I talk about the soul again, that may come down to our response. Well, I can see Jesus through our praise and our worship. Well, if anything happens to disrupt that, maybe maybe you're going through a spell of sickness or. Or maybe uh, you're having a financial struggle. Or maybe you just like to beat your husband over the head with a, a hymn book. <laughs> yes. now, these days, you know, that, that can really mess up how you see Jesus. Now, that's the only way you can see Jesus. See, your, your way, you need to rise above that. that that's, you know, when we're baby Christians, that, that may be the only way we can respond. But as we grow, we begin to walk in the Spirit. Right. And, and yes, we feel things, but how we feel, what has that got to do with whether the Lord is worthy of all praise and all honor and all glory? It has nothing to do with it. Right. The worship of the Lord is an act of faith. Right. If you're saved, you were saved by faith. If you're, you're, you're filled, you're filled by faith. If you're healed, you're healed by faith. We begin to interpret all of these things in that manner. Hi. <laughs> she forgot your glasses. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of people that, that might have been scared to come here, but man, you never need to be scared of me. I was preaching one time and a baby came up on the platform and wanted me to hold him, so I did. And I preached a while and then he was ready to get down, so I put him down and he wandered off. There's not much that can mess me up. Don't take advantage of that, however. <laughs> Recognizing the Lord, seeing Jesus, is to see him in a spiritual way. To understand him in a spiritual way. To be spiritual people. We must be God's people in this hour. Yes. We must be the people that, that reflect the image and the glory of the Lord. People need to be able to say, yes, there's something there that transcends feelings, it transcends emotions, it transcends circumstances. There's something deeper there. That is what the world is looking for. Because they, you know, they can join a lot of clubs and have a lot of feelings. Or, or they can go here, they can go there. And maybe produce those kind of feelings. Or, or give them that kind of comfort and warmth. See, we can, you know, this wasn't part of my sermon, but let me go ahead and say it. We can stop the Lord from working in our midst because he discomforts us. We want to do what we're comfortable with. Right. Well, I don't understand why it's got to change. It's got to change because God's moving forward. He's not moving backwards. Right. Oh, I got a couple people who understand that. God is now. Right. Amen. I thank God for everything He's ever done. Right. We we uh, we go back. You know, when, as those pictures were flashing of all those missionaries, and some some of them are very close friends of mine. And, Dibs and I have a long relationship with the Judy and Ruben Perez. Uh, I, I was their American pastor for about 10 years. And uh, we're very close to the Fireball family. She was Judy Fireball before she became Judy Perez. And uh, I had the opportunity to minister her family and meet her mother. I, she's the one who prayed over me that I spoke of uh, in the last week or so. Uh, I believe God blessed our ministry there because I started out that way by seeking out a, a matriarch and a patriarch of that church and had them to pray over me that, uh, that God would bless me and use me as their pastor. And, and so that's given us a real close connection. And it is a spiritual connection because mm -hmm. Lucille Fireball was a spiritual woman. And uh, Brother Fireball, her husband, I can't, it might have been Lee. I think, I, I don't know if, for sure. There's a whole lot of fireballs in certain parts of Virginia. It's hard to keep all the fireballs straight. I know one thing, though. I've never been a bad one. So maybe you're connected to them. That makes you feel real good this morning. It's not about your feelings. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that we can look upon you today. And it is, uh, it is a sight that transcends uh, what we see with our eyes, Lord. We know Thomas had that kind of a mindset. Uh, how do I know? I, I don't know if I believe this or not. 
I'm not sure you're really Jesus. And you, uh, you gave him the proof, but we need to transcend that, that kind of doubt. Lord, it isn't just what we see within our eyes. It isn't just the way things are at any given moment. Lord, there are so many variables in this world, so many different things that can happen around us or that can happen to us that would influence or affect how we relate to you. And those things may have absolutely nothing to do with who you are and what you are in our lives. Lord, we need to come to you in spirit. Being the people that God has created in his image. And this is the point of contact, Lord, when we first come to you by faith, wherever it was and whenever it was, that you began to work in our lives. It is about you. And it is about the spirit of the Lord working in our lives. Amen. Now, in... Uh, the book of Mark chapter 8. Here's an account that a, a lot of people have had interest in. Because we're not, I'm not quite sure about how this went down. It's one of those things that sounds kind of strange. And you know, that's one of the things I like about Jesus. He did a lot of things to surprise people. And, you know, he, he didn't behave in, in a manner that they may have expected at times. Uh, that's because he, hey, you know what? God does a whole lot of things that I don't even, you know, surprises me. That's because he doesn't have to ask my permission. He didn't even notify me most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I would appreciate a little bit of warning about this. You've got to tell me ahead of time so I can be prepared. And uh, God does things his way. Yes. God is in his heavens and he does whatever he wants to. Yes. So it's not, don't, don't put God in a box. Don't put the Lord's workings in a box. But instead, have an openness of heart to understand God is going to do things as we allow Him to. I'm just following a train of thought here. Now, I, got, I, I didn't personally ever get to see this woman, but she, she, uh, some of my family members thought very highly of her. And, and uh, she was an evangelist back when I first became a Christian, still living then. A, uh, not Amy Simple McPherson, but uh, Catherine Kuhlman. And I, I read her book about her life, and a and, uh, very remarkable uh, person. But I liked her, her phrase over and over again. She would say, let go and let God. A lot of us can't let God because we're still hanging on. So that's when we get into the soul. The soul will hang on, but the spirit will let go. You, there's trust there in letting go. You know, I always, I, I, I think, well, we, we, we should take and give to the Lord, and then we've got open hands. You can't receive if your hands are not open. If you're hanging on to, to things, if you're hanging on to your money and not honoring God, if you're hanging on to, to people and letting them become your gods, then you got a serious issue there. Some people say, well, I'm going to make the Lord the number one priority in my life. Why in the world would you demean God in a manner like that? Why would you bring him down to just being number one? Oh, that's real nice of you to make the Lord number one. I'm glad he's on your list. Let me tell you, it isn't God being number one. It's God being everything. It's complete yielding and submission to the Lord. And yes, it is a process, but we got to be on that road to process. So we're talking about now, now, now. God's constantly updating himself, and we are following him. So that means that he's going to... I, I say this sometimes, people don't quite get it, and it might even make them mad a little bit. I say, this is what God does. He, how I know God has shown up is I start getting uncomfortable. Oh, God just came in the room, and I'm immediately like, this is lunchtime now, isn't it? <laughs> we should close this service right now. <laughs> That's when I know God has shown up. Or I want to stay away from wherever the praying's going on. Mm. Because that's a spiritual connection, and it makes us uncomfortable. Let me tell you, this is how God is going to work in your life. He will make you uncomfortable. He's asking you to stretch the borders of your tent. Yes. Move out and receive more. And let that be how you seek God in a greater way. And whatever you, 
you can give to God, you give it to Him. That's a silly question. Can I still do this and be a Christian? Right. <laughs> you know, and in the over 30 years I've been in the ministry, I've been asked that a lot of times. For a lot of different things. Some of them big, some of them small. Can I do this and be a Christian? And they want me as a pastor to either validate them or, or invalidate them, in which case they probably want to fire me. A lot of people are button pushers. You know, they go around and they hear what they want to hear. Right. So people will say to me, "Can I do this?" I said, oh, "What a silly question! You already know the answer to that question, right. don't you?" Right. I said, well, "Why don't you just do what God's telling you to do?" Right. Where's your peace? Where's your walk with God? Let there let the answer come there. If you haven't looked into the Word, if you haven't sought the heart of God, if you're not walking in His character and His temperament, then you need to do those things, and then you don't have to ask that question. Because I've never found any reason in the years that I've known the Lord to restrain from giving Him anything. Giving Him my life and my heart. He is, as we say, our all in all. Sometimes I like to use the, uh, the you know, it's all in and all. I'm going to take that eye out, and then it says, God is all in all. 